Yo, what's good, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another Tyler Perry Sisters Review. If this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning family member, then you already know what it is and what it always will be. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Tell somebody to tell somebody if you choose to. But if not, just sit back, relax while we get into this messy, messy thing. Now, you see the thumbnail. And I am posing the question, how long will the sisters act like sisters? And this question derived from watching episode three. And if you did watch that episode, or even if you didn't, the sisters spent a lot of time at Andy's penthouse. They were reminiscing about the college days and, you know, things of that nature. And every time Tyler Perry in the past or the writers currently give us a moment where we see the sisters acting as if they actually like and love each other, I am always expecting the okie doke. Because it, it happens every single season. It has not failed since season one. And what I mean by that is every time there is a moment that the sisters come together in solidarity, they may give us two and a half moments each season. And then the remainder, we are watching them be at each other's throats. We are watching them give underhanded compliments. And downright, we are just watching them disrespect each other. And when I was watching episode three and as they gave each other the group hug and they went into the elevator, I said, now I am waiting for the floor to drop. I am waiting for the floor to fall in because I just honestly don't believe that the sisters are able to continue a healthy dynamic amongst the four of them simply because I'm just going off of history. And then I begin to think about every time that we have had these sister moments or these come to Jesus meetings and it just never pans out. It is never sustaining. And the most recent one that we had was in season seven with Karen and Danny. And even though a lot of people love that moment between them and a lot of people really appreciated it, I had a hard time really computing that to mean that these women actually let bygones be bygones. Because when I think about some of the things that Danny did in season seven, I am not someone that hold grudges, but it's hard for me to believe that the conversation that Danny and Karen had in Karen's office was something that held that much weight that they could just let everything go because Danny did express some things when they were at the mocktail event for Sabrina about how she felt about Karen, how Karen was always could only see the, the evil in her or the bad in her. And I'm like, well, sis, I mean, you don't really show a lot of good. <laughs> so her kind of seeing the worst in you, I understand why. And I've always stood on the fact that Danny has been the sister that I like the least. And this has been since season one, because a lot of the times when Danny speaks to her friends, I feel that there is malicious undertone behind it. When you with your girls, of course, there are some times that you are being sarcastic. You say some things that only you guys understand. You say a lot of inside jokes and they're funny and you laugh it off and it's key key. However, you know, when you are hitting below the belt, and when you get to the point that you hit below the belt and you don't care, it's it's malicious. And I feel like that's the season that Danny has been in for a long time. And then when things are brought to her attention, she covers it up with, you guys are judging me. Y'all know that's Danny's favorite line when she don't want to deal with herself and she doesn't want to deal with the reality of a situation. And I said, you know what? I don't expect much of sisters. So that's number one. But it's like I so desperately want these women to have a healthy relationship. I want them to truly demonstrate that, yes, there are moments where you need space from your friends. There are moments that you may have conflict. There are moments that you may actually have a downright argument. However, we can come together as adults and deal with the situation at hand. And we just don't, we don't always see that with them. And I think one of the cons of the show when it comes to these sisters acting like sisters is that when conflict arises or an argument arises or a misunderstanding, we never see that be played out in a way that's realistic. Whether that's, you know, I said what I said and I meant it. Or I said what I said, however, I do want to apologize for the way 
the tone in which I use because it was never my intent to hurt you, but it was my intent to speak my truth to you. Like those conversations. And like I said, I don't expect much of them. <laughs> and I go into this tug of war with, I want to see healthy relationships, but I'm also, I don't have a lot of expectations when it comes to the writers of accurately displaying that. So because of that, sometimes I'd be in this tug of war with the show, but I did say that I wanted to release more, um, content surrounding us is like I used to back in the day and my motto for this season is that I cannot expect Broadway when I'm willing to attend the circus sisters is a circus I can't expect Broadway I can't expect them to give me more than what they're just capable of giving so I just have to accept that <laughs> And it just it just is what it is. But I do still want to talk about the things that happen on the show in a realistic way. And also just to hear the thoughts of the people that may be watching it or expecting the same thing. Because I'm like, that's we have seen this in season one. I think the major conflict in season one was Andy and Gary, which we see something with Andy and Gary, a big blow up every season. But I think one of the most interesting thing is they tie that in with Karen Zach and Danny and Danny making references that she had sex with Zach in order to hurt Karen. And for me, I'm like, those are not the type of things you tell your friends like to be funny or to be like, no, you, there are just certain things you just don't do. And I have often wondered, and I think I may have made videos about this. Has Danny secretly wanted Zach all this time? And the reason why I say that is because there is one on one instance when you're just trying to hurt your friend. And then the other instance to me, when you're trying to make yourself look good in front of a dude. And sometimes I kind of get that vibe from Danny, even though she may seem cool with Fatima or what have you season seven, even though I really, you know, I would walk with Danny every now and then season seven is what truly turned me off from her as a friend. When she, <laughs> when she told Zach about, Karen being promiscuous or being hot in the ass when she was in college like that just put a bad taste in my mouth because Danny just makes me think of one of those people who smile in your face but they got that knife in their hand while you turn around and they just stab you in it and then you turn back trying to figure out where your pain coming from and they trying to help you find the person who actually stabbed you when it was really their ass who did it that's <laughs> That is how I view Danny. And this is going to take a lot for me not to have that perspective of her. And even with um, Andy, and I've always stated this several times, that there's nothing wrong with Andy and Fatima having, having a relationship, having a friendship. However, some of the things that Andy has done has caused me to look at her sideways as a friend. It really has. It really has made me look at her sideways as a friend. When it comes to Sabrina, Last season, you know, until up until last season, I was really riding hard for Sabrina. I was saying that, girl, you better, I was telling when it came to Karen, I'm like, girl, you better stick to Pam and Sabrina and Aaron because I'm the only ones who really have your best interest at heart. And then season seven, we began to see, you know, Sabrina kind of take a different role in the dynamic. Even when it came to Fatima and them going out, it was just certain things that Sabrina was saying that I wasn't expecting from her character. And even when it comes to Karen, Karen has done a lot of things, but a lot of her ish was connected to Zach. But I think as far as her being a friend to Sabrina, Danny and Karen, I mean, uh, and Andy, I think she's probably the one who's done a better job. And I know some people are going to disagree with me and that's perfectly fine. You could put in the comments why, why you don't. But I think that statistically, if we go and rewatch the whole season, who has been the better friend? And that's all I'm saying. Whether you like the person or not, who has been the better friend out of the sister circle? So I would really appreciate if the writers give us some time to see these women actually be friends, then watching them deteriorate even more, unravel even more. It's time to shift. It's time to shift the dynamic. It's time to shift the perspective and really show how black women can come together in the midst of conflict, in the midst of disagreement and find a resolution, find a resolve and actually still keep their friendship, their sisterhood and their love intact. That's what I would like to see. I am not holding my breath 
Because we already know what it is. But I just wanted to talk to y'all about it. That's, that, that's what was on my heart when I was watching that particular scene. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. So I want to thank you for listening. Until next time, I will holler at y'all later. And y'all be safe out there. Bye.